Thank you.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have an awesome service this morning and I'm looking forward to see what the Lord will do tonight. And one of the things that we need to realize how important it is to to place our faith in the, in a living God. Amen. We understand that in the Old Testament people were taught to to serve God by the works of the law. Most people don't realize what, what it means that it means that a person tries to do their best to serve and live and try to live to the best of his abilities on his own abilities and own strength like by grace are you saved through faith but not of yourselves. You see, to come into the grace of God, the whole thing that we have to depend on is, is for, for God to do the changing in us, but again, you have to be willing. And, uh, and if we're trying to do it ourselves, and what happens when you're trying to do it yourselves, what happens is that you go to your self-improvement course and so you try to improve yourself, you're, I'm working on me and, uh, and you make promises that you're going to change and the more harder you try, the worse you get it. <laughs> it's just like if somebody that is bound by a cigarette habit, for an example, and you're trying everything in your ability to stop smoking and you're cutting down your smoking to about two, three cigarettes a day and, and you're fighting with those three cigarettes and just when you think you had a beat, next thing you know it just explodes and it goes out of hand and you just go out of control and there you go again, smoking like a train, amen. And the reason it, it's like that is because you're trying to do it yourself. It's just like serving God. If you're trying to do it yourself without God, then what happens, you end up becoming religious. <laughs> Have religious activity, amen? You know, there, there are people that have been taught that if you, if you do your best, and hopefully I'll make it to the end. And, uh, and people who are trying to do it themselves, always struggles because it's like if you have a problem of getting angry and you've got a temper problem <laughs> it's just like you're saying I'm, I'm not going to get mad and, and, and it seems like uh, no matter how hard you try to keep yourself from getting upset you're just like a, a steam kettle sitting on top of the stone and sooner or later as the heat gets turned up the whistle is going to blow <laughs> and then when it blows, you have no control over it, and you, you, you try to zip up your mouth and everything else, but you see it's like a volcano when it erupts. It's because there's something that you need to realize, you need God to give you grace to help you, and that's in everything you do. It's not going to happen unless you reach out for God and put faith in God and realize that what Jesus did when he died on the cross. Hallelujah. You need to realize that God knew that you have issues, you have a nature that you have in your life and you don't even understand why you have it, but it's because you're born that way. Hallelujah. Did you know, you know, you're, you know how you know you're, you're a sinner? It, you're not a sinner because of what you do. Did you know that you're not a sinner because you, you do sin? You're a sinner because you're born that way. You are born with a sinful nature. And that sinful nature wants to dominate and control you. And that's the reason you're struggling because you're trying to conquer 
a problem that you can't conquer. They've been trying to conquer this for years until Jesus comes. The reason you can't conquer it because you'll never conquer it. Only God can conquer it through Jesus Christ. When we, when we go to Jesus and you're asking God to help you, now you, you look at a blind man coming to Jesus, okay? He's totally blind. No matter how hard that blind man is trying to see, he just can't see. Amen? No matter how hard he tries to open his eyes and look around, he, he's still blind. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's the same thing when you're bound by a sin that no matter how hard you try to do it yourself, you just can't do it. Amen? This is the reason when the blind man came to Jesus, he was not placing his dependence on himself that how I'm going to open my eyes. It's the same thing when you come to God with your problem, you're not coming to God and saying, God, watch me God, I'm going to fix my problem. Because you know what's going to happen when you're trying to fix it, it's not going to get fixed. <coughs> the reason you're coming to God is because you have a sinful nature that you're born with, and that sinful nature that, that you have had since you were born and since you have inherited uh, from your parents, you have a nature that you're born with and, and you be in an environment that, that has affected you and, and awakened all these things in your life and now it's out of control. And because it's out of control and you're wanting to do everything to try to stop it, Amen, do you understand? Some people try to stop being wicked by going into an isolation and become a hermit. <laughs> if I get away from everybody, then I won't get upset and I won't bother nobody and then they better leave me alone. But you see, though, even if they isolate themselves and get into a desert by themselves and become a hermit, they still have to deal with themselves. <laughs> Because that problem in you is not going to leave. Just like when I was in the Marine Corps and I realized my life was in mess and in trouble because of drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. So I thought, well, if I go back to Canada, I leave my problems in California. And then when I come to Canada, then all my problems will be gone. But I discovered when I got to Canada, my problems never left. The reason my problems never left because I was the problem. Amen. You ever stop to look in the mirror and realize the problem that you have in your life is no one else but you? Until you can admit that you have a problem, but what are you going to do about it? See, you have tried to fix it, you have tried to change, you have tried to make things better, and nothing's working. You understand what I'm saying? Because everything you're trying to do is by your strength and your own ability. So you finally get to the place that you say, I quit, I give up, I can no longer do this. And you say, help! <laughs> so when you say help, and you somehow manage to go to God, and you tell God, I have a problem. And all this time when you come to God, God's watching you and say, yeah, about time you come to me. See, God was waiting for you to finally surrender and realize that you cannot change the problems you have in your life. Because the problem that needs to be changed, only God can change it. And the way God changed it, he brought Jesus into the scene. God knew that man could never conquer sin. Because they were born with it. Amen. You don't have to try to teach a child how to be good or be bad. They automatically know how to be bad. You know? They know automatically, instantly. They, they know that you're not supposed to go play in the toilet, you know? They just go and say, don't go in the toilet. They still go splash in the toilet. You think they're going to listen? No. You tell them, don't go in a cookie jar, and they go and steal a cookie. Amen. Isn't that kind of funny? 
And he catched him and said, I caught you in a cookie jar. <laughs> and you tell him, no, you can't do that. You give him a spanking and they still do it again. It's because their nature is like that. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's not until you recognize that you have a problem that you cannot solve it yourself and you must come to God and you must come to God and ask Him to, to give you mercy like the blind man. Thou son of David had mercy and he was asking mercy because he was blind and he was tired of being blind. It's the same thing. You're tired of being bound by a habit, bound by a, a problem you have in your life and you have to acknowledge it and come to God and be willing to give it to God and say, God, I can't solve this, but I'm coming to you so you can help me and set me free from the mess that I've made myself. Amen. You understand? You can't change the evilness of our hearts. That's why God sent His Son into the world because He knew that one day we would have to come to Him to ask for help. You know, when we, when we do something wrong, you know the first thing we do when we do something wrong? We cover it up. We don't want nobody to know it. Why do we do that? Because we don't want people to think we're not, not so bad. But sooner or later, people are going to find out. <laughs> no matter how hard you're trying to cover it up and hide it, it's all going to show up one day. Now when it shows up, what are you going to do about it? And you have tried to do it. Now, the reason God sent Jesus into the world is because he knew that you're going to need help. Let me ask you a question. Be honest. Let's take the mask off. Every one of you, no matter who you are, you need help today. Amen? I don't care if you're serving God for 50 years. You need help. Amen? There's always something that you need help for. Amen? Because if you're facing a situation, how are you going to solve it? You may not know how to fix it or solve it. The only thing you've got left to do is go to God and say, God, I need help to fix this problem. So now when you finally get to God with that problem, like the blind man, he finally got to Jesus. And Jesus asked him, first question God asks you is, what do you want? Let me ask you something. What do you want from God? I'm not saying what you want to do. I'm not asking you to solve your problem. You've got to, God's asking, what do you want me to do for you? And this is where you have to make a decision. What do you want God to do for you? Now the blind man knew exactly what he wanted God to do for him. He just told Jesus, I want to sing. What is it that you need God to do for you? If there's something in your life you want to be set free from, then you need to let him know that that's what you want. Some people come before God and say, what do you want? Well, I don't know. Give me anything. <laughs> You think you're going to get anything when you don't even know what you want? You're only going to get what you want out of life is what you put into it. You can't get free from something unless you want to be set free from it. A person that has a drug problem never gets set free from a drug problem until he wants to get set free from it. Alcoholic never gets set free until he's tired of being an alcoholic. A person is a miserable person never get, stops being a miserable person until he's get tired of being a miserable person. A person that's sick in his body is never going to get healed until he gets sick and tired of being sick. So when you've been sick and tired of in your life, what's missing, what's the element missing in your heart and mind? 
So Jesus asked him, what do you want? Jesus says, there are blind men sitting up on the sea. The next question he's going to ask you when, he, when you ask him what you want, do you believe I'm able to do this? Now, do you believe, the blind man asking Jesus, right? Do you believe that Jesus can open his eyes, that is blind? Now, he's not asking the blind man to open the eyes. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus asked, do you believe I'm able to open your eyes? He didn't ask if the blind man had the ability to open their eyes. The same thing, God's not asking you to change your ways, but he wants you to believe that he can change you. It's the same thing when you ask God to forgive you. He's not asking you to try to stop the sinful lifestyle you're living and he's asking you, do you want to stop living like this? Do you want to start a new life? It's not until you want it. Then he asks, do you believe that I'm able to change you and give you a new life so the old things will pass away and all things become new? Do you believe God can do that for you? But if you haven't asked, how can you receive that? You know, everything that God is asking us to do, He wants us to trust in Him, not in ourselves. Most people don't even know when it comes to paying tithes and offerings, why God wants us to pay tithes and offerings. And strange, isn't it? Why would God ask you to pay tithes and offerings? So how in the world is God going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing? Do you expect God to pour out his blessing upon your life because you asked for it? But how does the Bible teach us how God releases the blessing of God upon our lives? It's only after we give. Funny, people want to, like a farmer, he goes and says, he goes and wants to plant a, a crop. He says, want to plant some potatoes, right? But if you never plant any potatoes, how do you expect him to grow any potatoes? It's the same thing. How do you expect God to bless you if you never give to him? You understand what I'm saying? God never gives you, God never blesses you until you give it to him first. Same thing, you can't get saved until you give your life to Him. You ever stop to take one? You have to surrender your life and He gives you His life. People want to get everything from God without giving up themselves. You can't do that. That's not how it works. Jesus told the disciples one day, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and pick up the cross and follow me. So I want to follow you, Jesus. Then he said, deny yourself. Everybody wants to follow Jesus on our terms, right? But Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to give up your way to have his way. Why? Because as long as you want to live your life, you can't live his life. When my life ends, then his life begins. You understand, you want to be free from sin, you've got to give up sin. And when you give up sin, he gives you a new life. You want to be free from hate, you have to give it up. And then you must be open to receive love in this place after you give it and surrender and you repent of it and say, I'm sorry, I don't want to ever be miserable no more. Take this hate out of me, take this hurt and pain out of me so I can be free, so I don't be filled with sorrow and discouragement and hopelessness. But until you give it up, it's just going to look at you straight in the face and never let you go. But the moment you decide that I don't want this no more, I want to be changed and I want to be set free and ask Jesus to come in your life, your life will change. My life never changed until I surrendered my life to him. My life never received, I never got delivered and set free from drugs, alcohol, swearing and cursing and all these things until I gave my life up to Jesus. And when I gave it up, it was so easy because he took it away from me. I didn't have to change, I didn't have to stop, he changed me. 
How much do you want to change? Good question, right? How much do you want God to bless you? Amen. Do you want to be happy? Glory to God. God's not asking you to serve God and be miserable. <laughs> God wants you to be free. Are you free now? Is everything free? Do you have total freedom in your life? Can you stay happy and can you rejoice and be glad and never get mad? How would you like to live like that? I'm allergic to getting upset. I'm allergic to arguing and fighting. I'm allergic to this stuff. I, I can't stand it because I don't want it. So I refuse to live in it. Says I'd rather live in the Spirit of God. And you know how I live in the Spirit of God? It's very simple. I pray. I yield to God. I worship God. I surrender to God. And then He comes alive inside of me. But until I gave up my life, I could not have His life. That's how simple it is. Give up my life. You know how, how, how easy it is to forgive somebody? You just have to ask. What was so hard about asking forgiveness? And when you're asking forgiveness, no lip service. You know what lip service is? You're saying it, but you don't mean it. When you say, I'm sorry, and you go to God and say, I'm sorry, I have a problem, will you forgive me? When you go to someone and say, I'm sorry, forgive me, that I've hurt you or done whatever wrong to you, Will you forgive me? You know, the very moment you make up your mind that, that I, I want to be forgiven of whatever bad thing you've done, that very moment is when God heals you and forgives you and sets you free. Amazing, isn't it? Hallelujah. And so when God forgives you, how about forgiving someone else? Has anybody ever done you something wrong? Oh, come on, everybody has somebody done something wrong to you. Hey, even preachers. <laughs> when somebody does you something wrong and they hurt you, do you want to get back at them and get even with them? I said, wait till I get you next time. Or do you say, I forgive that person that did me wrong and I'm going to pray for that person and don't let me get bitter because of what this person did to me. You know what happens when you do that? You can't hold a grudge against the person. You cannot have offense against the person. But if you don't forgive the person when they do you wrong, every time you see that person, you look at it, Something triggers off inside and you're going to get mad and you remember whatever that person did to you and you say, I knew it, you're going to do it again. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? You're, because you don't forgive somebody, you always hold in the back of your mind and every time you get into an argument, you throw that stuff you did this wrong, and you did this wrong, and you did this to me, and that to me, and the, and the fight goes on, right? You put fuel in the fire, right? But if you forgive it, you ain't got no more fuel. <laughs> when you forgive someone, you forget whatever happened. And when you forget it, it's erased and washed out of your heart. You don't remember ever anything going wrong. It's like it never happened. See, that's what happens when we go to God and ask God to take out whatever is wrong in our lives. He takes it out of us and He washes it away and then He replaces it with something good. Wouldn't that be a whole lot nicer? But you see, again, that can't happen unless you want it. How many want to live in a life of love? You know how you live in a life of love? You just have to practice it. 
You know how you practice? When you go see your wife, you say, Honey, I love you. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You don't think words has power? Say some nice things to your wife and see what her reaction is. Say nice things and give her a hug and see how happy she gets. Amen? She gets really happy, right? Now, go, to, go see your wife and say some mean things to her. Call her names. Knock her down. What's her reaction to you? She's going to be like an alley cat, ready to scrap you and, 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 and take his uh, paws and, and scratch you. Because you hurt her. She's going to react to you the way you treat her. The way you treat somebody is the way they're going to treat you back. But if you treat the other person good, they won't hurt you. You hear me? If you treat people right, they will treat you right. Even if they're not serving God. You treat people right, the people are going to love you. When you go to a restaurant and you order your meal, and you have your meal and it's a cranky uh, waitress that's serving you. I heard this story in, uh, at the conference. And so this, this uh, waiter was a miserable lady. She was all upset and treat, served the food very mean, just super mean. So after he got the bill to pay for it, says, the Lord spoke to him, says, I want you to bless this lady that, that, that served you so miserably. It says, and I want you to give her a hundred dollars. And when, when, when he gave a hundred dollar tip to this waitress, that waitress says, why are you giving me this hundred dollars? I, I, I haven't served you good and all this stuff. Why did you give me hundred dollars? So he said to him, it's because God loves you. And she broke down and began to cry. She had a hard day. Everything was going wrong and her bills were over her head and she could hardly pay her bills. That hundred dollars he gave to her was able to help her in her finances and it put a big smile on her face. Wow. Amen. You see that? That's the same. You do good to people, they do good back to you. Yes. It's how you treat people. Yes. If you care about people, they care about you. If you love people, they will love you. But if we don't love each other, we don't practice that love, then it, it backfires. It's like, you know, it's very simple. Simple truth. This is Bible. This is what the Bible teaches. What you show is what you read. It's just like when you go to God and say, I want to bless you, then God will bless you. Amen. Abraham said, whoever blesses you, God is going to bless them. Amen. And whoever you bless, God is going to bless you. Simple. Amen. You ever see people, do you frown at people when you see them or do you smile at them? What happens when you smile? They smile back at you. Even if you don't know them. If you smile at them, they, they, they start smiling to them, they don't even know why they're smiling. <laughs> you may not realize this is very basic truth of serving God. Hallelujah. If you speak positive words, you get positive reactions. If you say negative words, you get negative reactions. If you complain and complain and complain, then you have to eat that complaining that you're nothing's good enough. But when you start praising God and thanking God, even when, when it looks like you, you have need of financial needs, at least you're happy. But if you're miserable and criticizing, complaining and all that stuff, you're just getting more.
more miserable by the minute because you're planting to be miserable. I mean, why would you want to do that? So it's a choice. Same thing. You know how you get more of God? You have to humble to God. You know how you get more of God? You got to pray to God. You want to have more of God? You need to read the Bible. When I have more of God, you got to spend time with Him. The more time you spend with God, the more time God spends with you. The same thing, if you don't spend time with nobody, then nobody spends time with you. Ah, poor me, I'm all by myself. Nobody loves me. Well, when's the last time you love somebody? You understand? You need to, to get involved with people. You need to get out of your shell and stop of being on the money crops, you know what I mean? You had a bad day. I refuse to have a bad day. I always have an awesome day. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? The other day I was, I went to Quebec and I came back and I was stopping and put some gas in the truck and uh, I was going to the to the, the store, I didn't notice that there was a sidewalk there. Because normally you don't have sidewalks in a gas station. You know what I mean? So I'm walking like I'm going, and, and next thing you know, I tripped on the sidewalk. Cause there was a sidewalk in the gas station. Ever seen a gas station have a sidewalk? This one had, didn't we? So I tripped on it and I went bang, hit the Wow, I caught myself with my hands. Boy, I hit, and boy, it was hurting. Knocked the breath out of me. <laughs> Thank God nothing bad happened. I was just sore all over. I think it hurt my pride more than anything else. <laughs> so here I was, this guy that he didn't know, he helped me get up and asked me, how are you doing? He says, I'm doing fine. <laughs> You see, I could have got mad. I could have got upset. I could have started swearing. I could have got like, get really upset. I'm going to sue this gas station. <laughs> I didn't say nothing. I had to say, praise the Lord. And I said, oh, thank God. I started praying instead. I said, oh, I hope I, I pray that I won't feel so bad. So then from there we went to the Shrik Shif Chalet. And, and we go to the parking lot. And for the life of me, I don't know, they, you know, they, you know, some parking lots, they, they put like uh, uh, cement, uh, little side yeah. lifters, yeah. but somehow they have put a big boulder on the corner. <laughs> and when you're in the truck and you're turning, yeah. you can't see that. Yeah. And you go, boom, you hit the side of the truck right behind the back wheel. And you see this dent, you know. So what did I do? What did I say? I said nothing. Yeah. I could have got mad. You know, I could have gave head to that thing, you know. I could have lost my joy. <laughs> but I refused to let it affect me. I just start praying, God, we help me and we'll fix it up when the day comes, right? You can have a bad thing become a good thing. When something goes wrong, did you thank God that everything's okay anyway? I still got the truck. Just a little dent. And got some nice body work done on it. <laughs> it's a question of what you say. Do you say negative things? Do you speak discouraging words? Do you speak life or are you speaking death? What is it? You want to rejoice? Or... Hallelujah. No need to complain because it's not going to do any good. And no need to get mad because you have to repent after you get mad. <laughs> so you must well praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus is looking for us to be willing to surrender ourselves to Him all the time. It's very most common things that we can do 
What do you want to become? How do you want to think? You know, the Bible says, the, the person's mind that is set upon the Lord shall have perfect peace. It's if you keep your mind on good things, then, and honest things and righteous things, you feel a whole lot better. If you start thinking miserably, then you're going to be miserable. So when you wake up in the morning, do you wake up grumpy? Or do you wake up and say, Praise the Lord! <laughs> How do you want to get up in the morning? When you go to work, you see the mouse and think, It's a nice day to be at work, glory to God. Did you ever compliment your boss that you're, I'm so glad I'm working for you, even he's the most miserable person in the world. <laughs> Amen. Just like this man that, that, that basically, he was, had this guy that was selling these pencils on the corner of the street, and he was very, very grumpy in the newspapers, you know. And so he always bought him a newspaper and always gave him a tip, and he was cussing him out every time he did that. And the guy, one guy came by and said, why do you tip the guy? Why are you always being nice to this guy? This guy doesn't deserve a tip and doesn't need to be treated right. You know what he said? I says, I refuse to uh, let somebody's negative lifestyle affect my life. I refuse to let somebody else's misery make me miserable. So I stay happy. Amen. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. So what do you want God to do for you tonight? What is it that you've been asking God? You want God to change things? How many, how many want God to change anything in your life? Have you asked God to help you in that area? What do you want God to do for you? Ask Him. Ask anything in his name, he will give it to you. Amen. He won't condemn you. He'll forgive you. He will wash it away and erase it and give you a new start. Isn't that what it's all about? You want a new start in life?
It's happy hour. Glory to God. That means we're going to take up an offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's happy hour. Glory to God. Because God loves a happy, cheerful giver. Amen. Hallelujah. So we give you an opportunity to bless God. And thank God for His goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, if anybody still wants prayer, and you want God to change your attitude today, or your heart and your mind, hallelujah, then just ask Jesus, okay? Father, we pray for every person that is here that they will make a decision to surrender their hearts and lives to you and make a difference and change. And we pray, God, you bless the people who gave today and bless them in abundance. Hallelujah. We pray for James' uncle. He was asking that, that, that the clients, that he has a thousand clients, that, that they will not have any struggles or battles in dealing with all these thousand clients that they will cooperate and they will be blessed and, and have good customers and have no more hard time working with them. In Jesus' name, amen. 